and I guess it's time we talk about the rules and official hardcore servers and the discussions that are popping up regarding the rules we currently have and which of those rules should actually be enforced on official hardcore servers as well. Now, please let me know your thoughts in the chat and the comments as we go through this, but basically what I want to do in this video, I, re I reacted to Stay Safe's video recently, so that gave me a couple of ideas of what I want to talk about, but I made a video recently talking about what I want to see when it comes to rules, but today I want to highlight the pros and cons of the rules and why they're there in the first place, and talk about what could happen on official servers and a couple of solutions to everything that people are discussing. Discussing. Basically, there's two sides here. There's a side who wants to have all the rules we currently have in the add-on because they want to have the challenging part of the hardcore challenge. And then there's the players that want a more social, interactive game who wants less rules and that might take away part of the actual challenge itself. So it's more of a do you want it to be a challenge or a social game? Now let's talk about the rules themselves and for this I want to take this over to the website for Classic Hardcore where we can check out all the rules and basically talk about them as we go through. So here we go, this is the Classic Hardcore website. Let me just take this off and we can take a look at this. So we're going to go through the rules one by one, talk about the rules and the pros and cons of that rule itself, and what Blizzard could do on hardcore servers in regards to these rules. So the first one we have to talk about here is death equals delete, this one should obviously stay the way it is. Oh yeah Bunda, yeah it is, uh, you can see this one on YouTube, and you can also see it right now on Twitch or Kick. Yeah, so death equals delete, this one should obviously stay the way it is. Next up we have professions, so no restrictions, all professions are allowed. Not really anything to talk about here, same with talents, like nothing to really talk about. Next up, gear and items. You can use all gear that you self-craft or obtain via quests, drops or NPC traders. Basically all rarities, I see no real problems. Like, just leave this the way it is, you can use all gear pieces, but this one we will touch more base on when it comes to the auction house and trading and interaction and stuff like that. So first of all, the auction house. On right now on Hardcore we have no auction house, no player to player mail, collecting NPC mail is permitted and your personal bank can be used. Now this one. This one, they could do like two things, they could let it be the way it currently is, so no auction house. They can also open up the auction house completely, right? Where people can trade between uh, hardcore players on hardcore servers. And personally, that is what I want to see. Like, I I'm trying not to be too subjective here, more objective, but they can do two things. They can, they can keep it the way it is, and have no auction house, no trading, no player to player mail. And that way you will keep the challenge the way it currently is, or you can open it up. Personally, I think it would be in incredibly fun to see a hardcore economy where you know that everything that is being sold has been farmed or like it's been obtained by a hardcore player. One of the many reasons why we have this rule right now is that we're playing on a classic era server where players can be playing regularly or hardcore, so a mage can literally farm Sulfarak for BOEs and not to be hardcore, but still sell that on the auction house. Which is why we have the no auction house rule, because someone who's not playing hardcore can farm the item, put it on the auction house, and then if someone who's playing hardcore can buy that item, it creates an unfair advantage. But I would personally love to see a hardcore economy where everything that is on the auction house and everything being sold is actually obtained through hardcore methods. I think that would be incredibly fun to watch, and some of the items that have high values right now on Classic Era, they could have insane high values on hardcore. Think about potions, flasks, everything that uh, attracts or everything that buffs your player and makes you survive more will obviously be in high demand and think about the price of edge masters that's going to be absolutely insane okay they could also do one more thing for example they could restrict the auction house to only level 60s or something that i've been thinking about myself have it be a in-game feature 
that unlocks at level 40. That way you can start using the auction house before max level, and it also prevents you from buying and twinking yourself out at level 1, 10 or even level 20. So having it be something that opens up at level 40 could be fun because some classes will need some gold for the level 40 mount and suddenly getting access to the auction house at level 40 could be a huge boost to be able to afford that mount at level 40. Now what do I think will happen when it comes to this rule? I'm just going to talk about both auction house and trading at the same time here. I think Blizzard is just going to do nothing. If people want a challenge where they, there will be no auction house and no trading, they will keep on using the add-on making their own challenge on those servers, but for the servers themselves I don't really foresee Blizzard doing any meaningful changes under than adding in that equals delete and maybe fixing some of the what do we call them? Some of the griefing methods, the bugs, the exploits, whatever. I think they will be fixing a couple of the ways people are griefing. And some of them can be difficult to fix, but they will try. And they will probably fix most of them. Buffing and player interaction. I don't really see this one going anywhere. Like right now, we can't ask for buffs if I just scroll down here. You can see world buffs and player buffs and assistance are permitted as long as you do not ask for them or continue taking help. Now this one I don't see being enforced at all on official hardcore servers. If you ask for help it's not like you will automatically get banned so this one isn't really worth talking about. Next one though, grouping. No grouping out in the open world unless you are en route to your hardcore dungeon. This one is quite interesting, let's talk about it. So for this one, the grouping itself, if you can group up freely, it will make a hardcore meta where you would either want to quest in a group, or if you can group and do dungeons, you will basically have a melee cleave group and a spell cleave group where people are just grouping and making the content easier for themselves. The obvious downside of being able to group when you want is that you are making the hardcore challenge less of a challenge and it's way easier for pretty much everyone to be involved, right? You can just have a healer, have a tank, have a hunter and basically make the perfect group to go all the way from level 1 to level 60 either in the open world or by questing and you will make the entire challenge so much easier for yourself. Now, by having no grouping, the challenge itself will be more challenging, so I think that would be fun, but once again, I don't foresee a Blizzard actually enforcing a rule where you can't group on a server. That just seems wild to me. <clears throat> Next up though, dungeons. This one, same thing once again. Full hardcore dungeons or dungeon groups are authorized but only one run of each dungeon per character, unique dungeon ID, and dungeon quests are authorized. This one feels kind of weird right now on hardcore because some dungeons take more than, than bleh, more than one run to do all the quests, like for example Surfarak. If you have the Troll Temper quest, not everyone in the group will be able to do that one. And even for me, I was not able to do in that quest if I just go to my quest log right now. Actually, let me go to Tanaris, you can see right here. I still have the Troll Temper quest available because I was not able to do that one. In our group, only three people got to finish the Troll Temper quest. So in most cases, a Sulfarak full quest run takes more than one reset, which is why the current rule set feels very awkward if you want to actually do all the quests that are available in the dungeon at the same time. So for this one, I would love to see there being the ability to probably do more than one reset per dungeon, but I would also not want to see that people spam dungeons all the way from level 10 to level 60, so we have to try to find the middle ground. <clears throat> now maybe what they do here is maybe give you so you can do one dungeon every single day. That way, if you fail to do your quest in Sulfarak, you can come back the very next day and then start doing your dungeon. Or maybe you can do one dungeon every hour, maybe you have five dungeons per day. 
basically a compromise, right? Because in my opinion, you should be able to do more than one dungeon per day, but you should also not be able to just spam dungeons endlessly, because personally I feel like that would take away a lot of the fun of the challenge itself. That being said, the way I think it's going to happen is that you will basically be able to do as many as you want. I think it's 30 resets per day or something, which is the cap, so it's probably going to be the exact same thing that we currently have in Classic WoW. So regular Classic WoW rules, basically. Now there's only really two more things to talk about here. You have forbidden abilities and actions and uh, storm mounts, PvP and battlegrounds. For storm mounts, there's not going to be any, so not really worth talking about that one. For PvP and battlegrounds, you can probably do PvP, but on hardcore servers, why would you? <laughs> Uh, death is still equals delete, so I don't really see why you would. And personally, I think even PvP death should be death equals delete. That way, if you go for, for example, Gurubashi Arena for the Grandmaster Trinket, it's more of a risk versus reward. It's a higher risk, but getting the trinket is also a huge reward, right? So that would be incredibly fun. Imagine all those like one life arena battles in Gurubashi. That would be so much fun to watch. <laughs> now for abilities and uh, forbidden abilities and actions, warlocks cannot resurrect via soulstone, shamans cannot resurrect via ankh, and paladins cannot bubble hearth, no light of a loon plus hearthstone, no using the auto unstuck feature to teleport to major cities, all of this, these ones probably, like, the only thing here is that this one right here, the auto unstuck feature, this one will probably still be there because once again, it's a regular blizzard survey. Everything else though should be fixed, like warlocks should not be able to resurrect, of course, death equals delete. Shamans can't ankh because once again, death equals delete. Now for bubble hearth, I've talked about this before, just reduce the actual durability or the actual timer of bubble, that way paladins can't bubble hearth. And when it comes to light of a loon, just leave that the way it is, that way everyone will have one bubble hearth regardless of their class, and that way it, it just creates some flavor, right? So leave Light of Illumin plus Hearthstone the way it currently is, that way you can use it as long as you do the quest. I think maybe that's an alliance only quest, but I'm not sure, but hey, <laughs> it is what it is, right? And then we also have, um, what more do we have? On Forbidden Abilities, I guess we can talk about Hunter Feign Death and Rogue Vanish. I don't feel like they should do anything with those because Hunter Feign Death can be resisted. And same thing with a Rogue Vanish, they can fail, right? So both Feign Death and Vanish, they can fail. Now a Paladin in Bubble Hearth literally can't fail. It's a guaranteed survival every single time. Now, all of this being said, what exactly is Blizzard going to do? Well, they're going to do one thing, uh, two things. They're going to fix all of them, well, most of the griefing methods they're going to fix, and they're going to make it so death equals delete. Everything else, I think they will leave the way it is, because let's face it, the, the second they start enforcing more rules, like let's say they disable grouping, they disable the auction house, they disable trading, they, they do one dungeon per day, what are they essentially doing here? It's more work for less reward. They put more work on themselves to attract less players, and as a business, that doesn't make sense. They want to do the exact opposite, do less work for more reward. So at the end, I just think we're going to get basically fixing griefing methods, and also making it so death equals delete, and everything else will be open. So grouping will be open, trading will be open, dungeoning will be open, and it's up to the players to enforce player-made rules. So what will probably happen is we're going to have the same add-on over there as well for people who want to have a solo self-found challenge, but the server itself will be very open. And I guess that's pretty much what I wanted to talk about. I just wanted to use that flight for a half a second and talk about my version of the rules, some of the pros, some of the cons, and what's basically going to happen there. And now we're going to go and hand in our Warlock quest from Sunken Temple.